Hi guys, all right, so um, we're gonna go through velocity versus time graphs. So when we're talking about a velocity versus time graph, basically we're just wanting to show um, an object's velocity at any given point in time. So for our um, purposes for this, the y-axis is gonna be our velocity, or in this case, the speed, because it's only gonna give us those positive quadrants here. Or, um, and the x-axis is going to be our time. So velocity is going to be on the y, and um, time is going to be on the x. All right, so let's look at a very simple example to start with. So Maria walks at a constant speed of 6 meters per second for 5 seconds. She then runs at a constant speed of 10 meters per second for 5 seconds. All right, so please notice that this is um, similar to what we did before. So, oops, didn't mean to move that around on you. So basically what we've got going on here is it's showing us that for the first five seconds, Maria was going this six meters per second. And then at the five second mark, they started, she started going 10 meters per second and she continued at that rate for another five seconds um, to total 10 seconds. All right, so what does a velocity versus time graph really show us? Well, the slope of a velocity versus time graph is going to show us the acceleration. A constant slope means that we have a constant acceleration. Slopes can be positive, negative, or zero in this case. So if we're looking here, um, we've got velocity versus time. So this constant line right here, this means no acceleration. So that means we have a constant velocity, a constant speed. So no acceleration, um, zero slope means constant speed. All right, now here is a positive slope. That positive slope is going to tell us that we have positive acceleration. And then this negative slope is going to be negative acceleration. All right, so if a velocity versus time graph has a positive slope, the object is undergoing acceleration in the positive direction. Remember that those positives and negative signs, all they're telling us is our direction. Okay, so on this one right here, we have a positive velocity and a positive slope. So that means that our object is speeding up. So remember that if acceleration and velocity have the same sign, then that means that we have a, um, it's a speeding up process, okay, or acceleration. If we have a positive slope, so down here, this is positive slope, so that means positive acceleration, but a negative velocity, because we're in the negative region, that means we're actually slowing down. So if the signs of velocity and acceleration are opposite, then you're slowing down. Okay, the opposite is true depending on if you flip your signs. So in this case, we have a negative slope, so that means negative acceleration, but we're in the positive velocity, so that means we are slowing down. Down here, we have a negative slope, and which means negative acceleration, and we're in the negative velocities, which means that we have negative velocity, negative acceleration. We're actually speeding up in the opposite direction of our origin. All right, so now let's talk about deceleration versus acceleration. So just to kind of recap from the previous screen, um, whenever you're decreasing speed or slowing down, you are decelerating, and whenever you're increasing speed or speeding up, you're accelerating. So just a little terminology there. All right, so how about comparing two um, objects at the same time, okay? So here we have a um, velocity versus time graph, and we have a dashed line, and we have a solid line. So the difference between the two is clearly the slope. They both have a positive slope, so positive acceleration. This one has a steeper slope though, so that means it is accelerating at a greater rate. So this has a bigger change in the velocity per unit time than the solid line does. All right, now, you already knew all about how to find slope. What else can a velocity versus time graph tell us? Well, it can tell us the displacement of the object. So in order to define the displacement of object on a velocity versus time graph, we're going to look for the area under the curve or the area under the line. We can use geometry in order to determine that. And yes, you can have a negative area or a negative displacement. 
Now, in order to find the area under the line, we're going to use a little bit of some simple um, geometry skills here. So if it's a square or rectangular area under our line, we're going to use the length times width formula. And if it's a triangle under our line, we're going to use the one-half base times height formula for a triangle. All right, so let's look at some of these and do some practice. All right, so if we were going to look at this very first little segment here, segment R, um, and we wanted to determine the displacement of that object just for segment R, we would need to look at just this section, okay? All right, so we see that we have a triangle, so in order to define our displacement here, we're going to do one-half base times height. Okay, so our base is going from 0 to 4, so our base is 4, and then our height is going from 0 to 20. So we're going to do 4 times 20, and then we're going to take half of that. So 4 times 20 is 80, and half of that is 40. So the displacement for segment R of the graph for our car is going to be 40 meters. Okay, now let's go look at something like... So we'll go look over here at W. Okay, if we were looking at W and we wanted to determine that, we need to determine this one is going to be a rectangle, so we're just going to do straight length times width. So it's, see, we're going from 22 to 30, so that's 8, that's our base or our um, width, and then our height that looks like we go up to 10, so 8 times 10 is 80. So for segment W, our car traveled 80 meters. Now, if I ask you to determine the displacement of the car for the entire trip, you would need to define all of these little individual um, displacements underneath, all these little areas, and we would need to add them all together. Now, if I ask you to find the total distance, you would want to do the absolute value of those. Now, you're sitting here probably thinking, Portwood, absolute value, who cares? It's all positive. Well, everything's not always above the x-axis. So if we had some stuff occurring below the x-axis, it can have a negative displacement value, which can then come into play when we're looking at total displacement or total distance. All right, so let's look at some of these. So looking at lines A, B, C, D, and E, um, on a velocity versus time graph, let's say which are motionless. So motionless would mean that they have zero velocity. They don't have a velocity. So actually, in fact, none of these are motionless. All right, which ones have a constant velocity? If they have a constant velocity, that means they have no acceleration, so there should be no slope. So that means all of the ones that are horizontal lines, so A and E. Now, note that D does have an area where we have a constant velocity, but the whole entire thing itself doesn't have a constant velocity. All right, which ones are accelerating? Accelerating means that there's a slope, okay? We have a change in velocity. So that should be B, C, and we have a segment on D that also has some uh, slope, so an acceleration. All right, which ones change their motion? Well, changing their motion can mean a couple of things, right? It could be a change in direction, or it could be a change in the actual velocity. So anybody up here who has a slope has a change in their motion. So that would be, again, B, C, and D. All right, to have a positive velocity, that would mean you need to be above the x-axis. So that means A, and then parts of B and parts of C have some positive velocities. And then which ones displace the least? So that means who has the least amount of um, change in their position between the beginning and the final. So this is a little bit trickier. So when you look at this, we're looking at the area under the curve, right? So if you look at A and E, those guys, that's a huge amount of area. So it's definitely not A and E. Okay, so that's going to leave us down to B, C, and D. Okay, well, if you'll notice, B and C, they cross 
that x-axis. Now, crossing the x-axis, what that means is that they actually came to a stop. Okay, so they're coming to a stop there. Also notice that there are going to be some negative regions, which give us a negative displacement. And then there's also some positive regions up here, which give us a positive displacement. Okay, so it's definitely going to be probably B that's going to give us the least displacement here. All right, so a little synopsis of what everything on a velocity versus time graph means. So if it's a horizontal line, a straight line, that means we have a constant velocity, no acceleration, no change in speed. If you have a sloped line, that means we have a constant acceleration. So we're changing velocity um, every unit of time. Positive slope tells us that we have a positive acceleration. Again, positive just tells you the, um, the direction. So this does not necessarily mean it's speeding up. You've got to look at velocity and acceleration to tell if something's speeding up. And then if you have a negative slope, clearly you have negative acceleration, but again, does not mean you're slowing down. You must also know about that velocity. All right, so here's a nice little summary graph of a velocity versus time. So we've got over here steady acceleration, so change in velocity over time. All right, here we have no change in velocity. So this is like cruise control. You're just cruising along. All right, here you have another change in velocity, but this one is not as steep, so it's a little bit more gradual. And then you are decelerating or going uh, slowing down. All right, let's talk just a little bit about acceleration versus time. So the slope of an acceleration versus time for our purposes, for our course, is going to be zero, okay? If you try to start looking at the slope of an acceleration versus time graph, um, you get into some calculus fun, and we're just not ready for that yet. So we have a constant acceleration, basically, for all our purposes, and um, Therefore, we are not going to look at the slope of a acceleration versus time graph. The area under the curve is really what's important for us for an acceleration versus time graph. The area under the curve is going to give us our velocity. So if I had a pretty little acceleration in time graph and I had something going on, um, say like this, then finding this right here is going to give me the velocity that the object was traveling during that particular time unit from there to there. All right, so again, finding the, um, finding the area under it is going to give us the velocity. And I just want to point out to you guys that acceleration, the units are meters per second squared, and time is in seconds. So if I'm doing length times width, I'm doing meters per second, second squared, sorry times our time, which is seconds. So if you look at just a little bit of the units here, that would cancel itself out, and then that would go to this. So multiplying those or finding the area does give you the units for velocity. So that's what we're finding. We're finding the velocity. All right, summary of the graphs. So distance versus time graph, the slope represents the velocity. Velocity versus time graph, the slope represents the acceleration. The area under the curve for a velocity versus time graph gives us the displacement. And on an acceleration versus time graph, the area under the curve gives us the velocity.